Before we look at the final example hands and analysis in the Holder Manager replay, I wanted to touch on just briefly a few points for especially live play, but also online play, and that is always knowing your table image. Okay, so don't only put other players on certain ranges. Don't only uh, look outwardly. Don't only analyze your table and then give them certain styles, certain types of plays. Um, don't only look out and yeah, give them certain profiles. Okay, also look within and see what your table image looks like. You know, how ask yourself, for example, how is my image in the eyes of these opponents? Is my opponent even capable of of understanding such concepts? Uh, as for example, a range. Is uh, is it a donk? Is it a maniac? Is it a fish? Is it a is it somebody who's just playing basically blind for the first time? Of course, you can't get into multi yeah, multi-dimensional thought um, based on somebody who's not thinking, right? So always you know table image your table image as such in the eyes of your opponents is very much dependent on your opponents and how how aware they are of the game and what their skill levels are, etc. How does my table image look for these guys here? Am I a complete unknown? What do they yeah, what do they assume? How are they how have they reacted? What have they what have they done? Um, table image is then affected by many different things. And of course one is, you know, the, the hands that you show down. It's your mannerisms and many other things too, but of course the hands that you show at the table and that is very often going to be so called advertising. And that means, especially in live play, when you can turn over a bluff from time to time, show your opponents after you push them up the hand that you had nothing. And that's so called advertising. Advertising is also when you show them, for example, maybe a good hand. Um, if you want to yeah, increase your, your tight image. Okay, if you want to increase your, your crazy wild uh, maniac style kind of lag style image, then you're going to be showing some bluffs and whatever else. Um, at the beginning of rounds, when you're, or sessions, when you're playing live, if you are an unknown player, and of course in that case all the other players will be unknown to you, you can even, in small pots, play a so-called metagame. That means that I wouldn't advise it for big pots uh, unless it's just a, a really deep stacked uh, game. But for small pots, you can even play really poorly. You can make bad moves on purpose so that you get to a showdown cheaply and then show that, show that hand in the end when you get to that showdown. Maybe you win, maybe you lose. Uh, the idea is to show that you played weakly, you played poorly at the beginning of a round when it was relatively inexpensive. And that's a so-called metagame move. It means that you actually actively lose on purpose um, or win with crap hands and maybe get lucky or whatever um, at a relatively small price in the hopes that people are going to start putting on maniac tag uh, fish kind of profiles, right? And that's when you are formless or unreadable. I'm not just based on one hand, of course, and good players are never going to just give you an entire uh, very fixated style based on any yeah, small amount of hands. Really good players, of course, do the same thing. They advertise as well when they get on new, new tables, and uh, you know they they're going to put you on the tricky list. And yeah, just know you, again, know your opponents, know yourself, and you'll be you'll be way, way ahead of the game in the long run. As always, try and be formless. Change up your game. If you're noticing that your your opponents are changing to your style, that's a good thing. If you're adapting uh, your style to theirs, that's generally a bad thing. Not always, but uh, generally you want them to be playing your game. You want to have dynamic control of the table. And you want to be unreadable. You want to be formless, as we had mentioned in the very initial video on ancient wisdom for the modern game. You want to switch gears properly. That means uh, increasing and decreasing your ranges in accordance with your players. Um, different moves, um, yeah, different, uh, different tells that you give consciously, okay, that would be, for example, if you notice that some of your players are quite experienced, and they've also read Caro's Book of Tells, for example, you can mimic certain tells with weak hands that are actually typically used for strong hands and vice versa. 
again being formless and unreadable. And then when you switch gears, you can give if you're that good and, and you are capable of seeing people who are who are kind of catching on to those tells, you can use exactly the same tells for completely different hands in completely different situations and yeah, again, utilize your table image to yeah to your maximum benefit. Summary of live versus online games, we've already mentioned that quite a few times. Uh, in the live game, of course, you're not going to have the statistical precision that you're going to have with uh, 100,000 plus hands, um, whatever, online. But you can generally say that when you do have, I mean, I, my, my experience is anytime I have over 100, uh, at least 500 hands on a guy, I mean, I fully believe I'm already seeing tendencies even at uh, 20 and 50 hands in general. Um, but that's, of course, way too light. You can really start talking about um, very definitive numbers, very definitive styles and um, and profiles once you get up to a thousand hands on any given player. But again, always be be conscious that some players do switch between this short stack strategy and big stack strategy and that's going to skew the numbers. And these guys, of course, even when playing just one strategy, they're going to change it up a lot. Okay, and these, these, are your, these are your top players and these are guys you got to be aware of. But in general, the the different statistics that we looked at and um, the different profiles are very representative of most of the players that you'll face in the online environment. Uh, live again, see Kiros Book of Tells, implement all the different concepts that we just covered here, and yeah, play heads up. The good thing about live play is, of course, you're only on one table and you're able to con uh, concentrate completely on your nine or five opponents or whatever you have on the table there.